So we are here today with Alexandria Green from Alexandria Crisell Photography. How are you doing, my dear? I am doing well. I'm excited to be a part of this. I'm glad that you thought about me. <laughs> I am too, because I knew you when you were just a little college student. Back in the day, <laughs> a little baby. Right, you started off as an RA and doing like student affairs work. And then in the last couple of years, you kind of transitioned out. What inspired you to transition out of higher ed into photography? So I kind of, like most people, I fell into higher ed just through doing like the RA work. And um, you were my supervisor the yes. <laughs> semester before I graduated. Um, <laughs> times. And uh, yeah, I just kind of fell into higher ed. Like I want to help people. I want to, I like counseling. I like doing all these things. I was good working with students. Um, couldn't really figure out what I wanted to do. And so it was free education. And so that's what I did. But once I finished my grad school program and got kind of working in the field, I was in housing which if anybody knows anything about housing, it is tough. Um, and you know well, you live where you work. <laughs> I'm an introvert, more of an ambivert, but I am um, basically after a few years of doing that, I had a really bomb resume, but I kind of felt like a shell of myself. Um, mm -hmm. Didn't really have good work-life balance. Uh, even though I had moved from Georgia back closer home to Detroit, which is about an hour from Flint where I'm from, I still just kind of felt like I was, slowly dying inside. So I, I came back home <laughs> for about six months and I didn't work. My parents let me come back and I just kind of vegged out a little bit and got myself back together um, and then became a caseworker working with youth because youth is my passion. Um, mm -hmm. Photography is not really a passion. It's an enjoyment and it's a vehicle, but youth is my passion. And so I got, after a year of working in um, as a case manager with uh, what we call opportunity youth or people who are youth who are looking at the GEDs and vocational training and different things, I got laid off. Mm -hmm. And uh, after I got laid off, I was like, you know what? I'm tired of working for machines. I'm tired of working for, you know, people who, who, and it's not everybody, but just working for entities that really struggle to serve the people they're supposed to in a, in a, in integrity or just like with some purpose. Like it's really, it's a delicate balance between numbers and people, but you can do both if you, if you can. And I was just working with people who focused on the numbers and didn't really care about the kids as much as they said they did. And so I was just like, you know what? I've been trying to do ministry full time. I've been trying to do this. I've been trying to do that. Um, I've been moonlighting as a photographer for maybe a couple of years and learning and growing. And that um, I'm taking forever. I'm going to wrap it up quick. And uh, <laughs> take, your time. take your time. Take as much time oh. as you need. <laughs> the, in July, I got, um, I got laid off in October. And in July, I went to my first uh, photography conference in Detroit. It was a free conference randomly popped up once I never saw the advertisement again I just filled it out and when I went I like learned like people are making living off of this like they're making good money they have a stable business I was learning about things I didn't know about and I I'm not a person that's like easily motivated or like excited about stuff when people are like oh what this is that but like I left feeling very like motivated like you know what I could leave my job and I could do this I had some good savings I was living with my parents. I was 27, 28, living with my parents. And it was just kind of like, I got a good opportunity. And so I um, tried to finagle, I, I got ready to leave. And then they wanted me to stay. And then I asked to go part-time and it didn't really work, but I ended up staying until they laid me off. And um, after that, decided to go full-time. And so I've kind of been on this journey for a little over two years of trying to navigate full-time business. Um, and uh, I work with you still. I actually have one of my teams staying with me now and has been staying with me since May. So I've been learning how to be a parent. <laughs> been learning a lot of stuff. Hard with the teens, let me tell you. <laughs> Listen, I've learned a lot. I have yeah. learned a lot. But it's been, it's been beautiful, but I've learned a lot. So I just kind of fell into it and decided to try to do it full time to try to start to mix like my education background with the photography. Um, and just basically kind of work for myself. I was tired of working for people. <laughs> now, I think that you are trying to blend like your education background with your photography. Mm -hmm. What does that wind up looking like with your business? Mm -hmm. When I first started, what it looked like was 10% of whatever I would make, I would put out kind of to the side in, in a bucket. And what I would use it for is because I worked, uh, I was a Young Life volunteer, which is a Christian organization that works with high school students. 
And then I just kind of worked with youth in general and that I still had youth that I was in contact with from the job I was laid off from. And so when they had like a need uh, or something that maybe the programs that they were a part of could not help with, then I would kind of step in and provide some resources um, or I took them to like a Shark Tank event, like a few of my kids to a Shark Tank event. And so just working with people to kind of give them, give our youth exposure or like resources. And so it started that way, but my business did not grow very quickly. And so um, what it transitioned into is I started to teach in some after school classes. Um, you know, you, you talk to your tax, your accountant and your tax preparer, and they're like, listen, if you do this, this doesn't make sense money wise, but if you do it this way, it makes sense money wise and business wise. And so I kind of navigated away from the 10% thing and then started to kind of just build experiences. So I started to teach an after school programs. And then I have a workshop that I have been piloting that basically is teaching teens how to become content creators and okay. by using their cell phone though and so for me i'm from flint and most of the work that i've done with youth is in areas that are impoverished or urban areas or whatever ever, whatever you want to call it it's been with people who have been typically di disenfranchised and mm -hmm. so one thing that has been important for me is access like even with the education is kind of access most people have a cell phone most kids have a cell phone or access to a cell phone and so it's been this idea of how can we teach kids how to get into podcasting, into videography, into photography, using basically what they have, and mm -hmm. then um, teaching them how to do, how to storytell and how to tell their stories and how to get to know themselves and then put that in the, in the context of like social media in a positive way. Um, mm -hmm. We see a lot of teens and the stuff that they see and the things that they want to be and the things that they want to mimic is it's way above their age, it's way, it's super inappropriate, it's not really realistic. And so just trying to teach kids how to channel what they're trying to deal with and what they're trying to to, to kind of deal with in themselves in a, in a way that's going to encourage other people and help them kind of get to know themselves better. So it's been a long windy road of trying to figure out how to make it work, but because photography wasn't my passion, it's just something, it was something I liked. It started off as stress management, like I would walk around after work and do it but because it was something that I liked and wasn't something that I was passionate about I'm a person where it's like I have to kind of connect the knots I gotta feel like I'm reaching kids I gotta feel like it's more than just a picture I um, mean that's not everybody but that's just me <laughs> and so I've been trying to make it a vehicle <laughs> do other things that link with the passions that you have because I think mm -hmm. that's important I think a lot of people it's a couple of things, right? So you went to the conference and you started to teach yourself and then you use that to bridge off into other things. I see a lot of people starting photography businesses because they want to make a lot of money, especially they want to jump into weddings because like, oh, I can make thousands of dollars for one day. I was like, oh no, it's not just one day. That's eight hours. <laughs> Colleen and the editing and the delivery and the pre and the post. There's a lot that goes into that. You and it's for 12 hours. <laughs> that is hard on your body on top of it right um and people are so caught up on what well, i'm charging this and i'm charging that and i see where photography becomes more of a grind and even if you're working for yourself a grind is still a grind and i know people are like oh you got to grind i'm like i'm trying to work smarter not harder i don't want to grind anything because yes. you know you know i think of grinding teeth that's bad for your teeth i think of grinding oh, yeah. gears mm -hmm. gears the oil so they're not grinding grinding isn't healthy <laughs> I, agree. I agree. And being a millennial and, ta and talking to a lot of my friends who are in my age group, so I'm 32, so talking to people in my age group who are also business owners or doing multiple things or or just work, you might be working for someone, but just the mentality is like, we got to grind, we got to do this. And I'm like, I like sleep. And I also learned through higher ed, like I, I can grind myself into a shell of myself and my life will be unfulfilled money's not the object you know we want to be stable and we want to make wise choices but it's just kind of like i don't think for me personally i don't think god created me to grind myself into the ground i no. think that <laughs> i think that that's not the purpose of life and it's it's not what i wanted to be so i 100 percent agree 100 <laughs> percent. Mm -mm. we gotta so, be simple <laughs> right so with teaching the kids do you have a way that you're helping them to kind of showcase um in terms of possibly like uh exhibits or like you know multi 
media, things like that, that you're helping them to, in addition to learning how to do these things, to then showcase their work and get it out to a larger audience for them? So it, it's in the pilot stage. And so I piloted with one group last summer, actually in, at my old church in Grand Rapids. And then I was in the works of um, working with the high school here locally to do three um, full day iterations of it with three different classes. But then we got the quarantine and we got everything else kind of going on in time and it hasn't happened yet. But because of all of this stuff, I've been thinking about moving it onto an online platform. But the, mm -hmm. the purpose is to, in the workshop, show them the basics of it and teach them how to do it. And then also help them understand like, hey, this is how you, um, you know, whether it's through a social media account or if there's different opportunities, this is how you take this and you use it. And then you can also flip it into a business opportunity. And so I think there's a small window now with podcasting and with content creation, all these different things where there's young people out here making money doing these things and and, oh, yeah. and these kids watch them they don't watch tv they watch you know they watch youtubers um yeah. and they watch tiktokers like the team that i have in my room she's constantly watching youtube videos whether it's a cooking or whether it's this or it's people just get ready with me i don't want to watch i don't want to watch somebody get ready for 20 minutes but they do it <laughs> so just showing them like hey you don't want to be a consumer you want to you want to contribute and so I think in the long run, um, there will be ways that we kind of help them, you know, we have a platform that we can also help tell their stories to and let them put their stuff on our platforms. That's the the end goal. Um, mm -hmm. It's been a little bit more slow than what I thought, but like I said, I'm not a person that's gonna grind myself into the wall. And so there's a balance, right, of trying to figure out timing and taking care of yourself and your family and stuff. And so we're getting there. Well, there's something to be said about a slow build, right? I mean, I feel like it'll last longer and be more sustainable if you're able to do a slow build, right? I agree. Um, and I was gonna say though, I mean, one vehicle, like you just said it yourself, YouTube. Yeah. It's real easy to get your brand um, verified so that you can upload longer videos if you mm -hmm. want to do that, or you can do shorter ones. Mm -hmm. And that might be, and it's. So far, it's free. <laughs> right, so far, because things change quick. <laughs> right, but I mean, for now it's free, so that might be one way to start, just to get it started and then branch out from there. Yep, and there's so many people, and especially our, our kids, like YouTube has a, a has a creator platform, so like they, they get you started on the basics, and some of it's like teaching, teaching the kids the basics, but also showing them the amount of resources that they have, like, hey, this is a one day workshop. We'll have other things to do, but guess what? You can go out and you can learn all of this stuff, you know? And so giving them resources, giving them people maybe who, who like different YouTubers and different people who actually have consistent content that'll help them in a way that they can um, digest it and, and kind of put it to work in their own lives. And so I hope that it becomes something um, impactful for those who it who it um who we get because I do have like a large five year plan for it but at the same time I'm kind of like you make a plan but that things don't always end the way you want I think that it could be really cool and great but at the same time well as long as the plan is static you know you have to adjust with the times we no one expected a, a global pandemic to upend everything oh <laughs> it wasn't for a global pandemic we wouldn't we we chat online but we wouldn't be having this I wouldn't be doing this interview series <laughs> so I was like I'm, I'm an opportunity <laughs> It's not something I ever thought I'd do. I was like, but you know what? I know some freaking creative people, some creative women of color, and I want to highlight them. And if only like 10, 20 people watch you, that's 10 or 20 more people that knew about you that didn't know about you before. And that's that's cool. That's cool. I think what you're doing is super dope. Well, thank you. So with the photography piece, because like you've done a lot, what is the long-term goal? Are you trying to transition away? Because I know you started it as a business. Is it mm -hmm. something that you're trying to maintain or with the five-year plan, is it kind of going to be part? Because I mean, yeah. you take great shots. Your work is beautiful. Thank you very, very much. I um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna be real. Like I ain't gonna lie. I don't know. So I, I um, I used to kind of going back to what you were saying about weddings and stuff. I finally, after two years, I'm finally in a place where I'm starting to do what I want to do or I'm starting to shift things to how it works for me so in the beginning 
I had some great people who are making, you know, six figures and making really solid money, really solid business minds, um, mentoring me and kind of giving me guidance on what to do. And I was doing those things and those things were working for me for the most part, but I also was kind of taking everything that came my way. Um, mm-hmm. And then as I slowly started to kind of narrow my focus, I, I've come to figure out what I like, even to like, I sell products. So I sell wall art and albums and books and prints and all these things and saying, okay, like I started here because it was the basics. And now I realize I actually don't really like this product or I prefer this, or I'm going to do this and I'm going to price it this way. And so now where I feel empowered like the last four or five months is that I have been shifting to what I want to do and so like I'm changing my logo I made my logo but I was like this isn't really me I'm a little bit more I'm not a soft little graceful script I'm more of like a marker script (laughs) like hey girl you know and I'm a very simple person yeah Yeah, like I'm a simple person but I'm not necessarily the most graceful person I'm more of a just kind of like relaxed casual kind of person and so when my clients meet me that's what they see and so I have I've basically decided to focus on high school seniors I really enjoy doing headshots and working with small businesses and so my main work has been hey we're going to work on people's business branding or personal branding and I'm going to work with high school seniors and then because I have to pay bills and that that and the way I have that set up is good I do consultations I do in-person Um, sales and and I I have a really good setup where I make some I make good money and I'm not I'm not setting myself up to fail business wise but I am because I come out of higher ed I understand that higher ed contracts people and so I've worked I've gotten like preferred vendor status kind of at like Wayne State and even I graduated from UGA University of Georgia I put in for that and it was really easy and so people don't realize that as a minority and as a woman that these government entities have to spend a certain amount of money with people of color or women and all these different things. And so I have leveraged those relationships to come in and do some shooting. So then I'm able to get contracts that it's, they have the money to pay the value of the product without much fuss. And so I've been doing that too. And it's not something I advertise as much as I just kind of do that as I build relationships. So that's my focus now, high school seniors and personal branding or small business branding. And then hopefully from there, maybe one day commercial work or some things like that as it makes itself uh, available. <laughs> and with your logo, are you creating that? Like, are you hand creating that? Are you using software, are you using Illustrator? Mm-hmm. Um, so right now I don't have Illustrator. I just have Lightroom and Photoshop, but I'm I'm grateful to have a good old bundle of friends who are creatives, my brother, some of my close friends, and then just my, my business circle who do have those things. And so I'm planning to have a, a Zoom business meeting with some of my friends this week, actually. Hello. <laughs> because I told them, I'm like, listen. Lock your room. I can Zoom yeah. by. Because I told them, I was like, I need some, I, you know, right now with the, with all this stuff going on, I don't have the funds, you know, to to get somebody to just overhaul all of my stuff. But I have a great group of friends who are creative and do a lot of great things and can offer and will offer their honest opinion and 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 we all help each other. And so we're just going to get in a Zoom meeting. I'm going to say, hey, I'm looking for, like, I'm looking, I need a palette. Like, I need a, this. This is what I'm thinking. This is why I'm thinking this. This is kind of the story I want to tell. Does this make sense? And then they'll give their input and we'll kind of be able to, you know, I'll have final say or whatever, but I'll be able to just get out of my own thoughts. And yeah. so, so I'm looking forward to that. Cause I think that, um, I just want to present, I, I, I just want to present my business as myself. And yeah. I think that I do that well in person, but I've struggled personally to do that like over the internet. And if I, I don't know if other people feel that way, but I feel that way, you know, and you get this, you're quirky. I'm quirky. I'm kind of, you know, I'm not, I'm I think just for a lot of different. people, I think for a lot of people it's the reverse. Like <laughs> people we struggle over the internet, but in person, like people know who we are and can connect. Yeah. I think a lot of people are more able and are willing to put on that facade of who they want people to think they are, but that may not be a hundred percent who they are. Yeah. In real life, but I actually did like a five minute video. Someone said, You need to do a video on why you did this. So I did a five minute video that's on the mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm so uncomfortable in front of the camera. So I threw a bunch of memes and gifts and like this to ease it up, right? Because I'm a goober, I'm a big ass goober, right? <laughs> so I saw that in there just to, but that's the way I'm in real life. If you meet me in real life, yeah, I'm sending you gifts. I gotta, and I ain't sending you a text response, I'm sending you a gift, and you know, you know, I'm sending you a gift or a meme, like. 
there's that. I but mean, then it's like I'm, I'm, <laughs> unless I'm focused on work stuff, I am very much a goober. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you feel me. And then I feel like there's so much content on online. And I don't say this. I think a lot of people say this in a very like like derogatory way. I don't mean this in a maybe I do. I don't think I do. But like I think so many people post so much stuff. It's so many voices. And sometimes yeah. I just scroll through the internet and I'm just like enough yeah. and i'm just like why and it's not that i don't have i feel like i have something of value but it's just like how it's just like why do i want to contribute there's a billion voices out there why do i want to try to thrust myself out there in the midst of it and a lot of people are like i want to change lives i want to do a lot of stuff but i think a lot of people say all that and it's really self-serving and so i try to like what um, about me yeah like oh i want to help people i want to do this actually you just want to make money and you want to do xyz and that like if you can own that then own that but i don't think everybody is putting stuff out here to help people and i don't think that the internet is the only way i'm kind of like an old person in a sense where i feel like the internet's a really great opportunity but i still feel like the micro work that we do off of the internet is the most impactful a lot of way a lot of ways i think a lot yeah. of people want to be motivated and feel like they're connected to all of these people and things that are doing all these great things but really is still the one-on-one -on -one kind of human connection and community that makes like the biggest impact in our lives. Yeah. And so I don't, I never want to be cheesy or fake outside of my normal corniness because I'm super corny, but <laughs> I think sometimes, sometimes it's, that's, I don't know, it's weird for me. <laughs> so in the midst of this, you're teaching yourself this business, these business yeah. opportunities, things like this. I'm gonna ask you real quick because part of this is photography too. Mm -hmm. What are you what do you shoot with? And what is one new skill that you want to learn from this whole this whole enterprise, these ventures? Creative. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask what creative one creative skill do you feel like you are gonna step outside of your normal box to try to learn? Okay. Um, right now I sh I shoot Canon. I know you shoot Nikon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not a real like oh Canon versus Nikon person, but I know you shoot Nikon. Either, but I did bring a Canon 5D Mark III this weekend because what happened was back in December, I sold my Nikon and switched to a Sony mirrorless. We need to talk because I have wrist and hand issues and any <laughs> the, the least amount of weight, the better moving forward. <laughs> yes, for weight, love it. For battery life, mm, that's what you're sacrificing. But other than that, I'm really enjoying it. But I was I was for conventions because I was supposed to shoot San Diego Comic San Diego Comic Con and they just canceled it because oh they didn't want it right. But anyway, I saw <laughs> that when you, were, when you were interviewing, you sent me the one interview with you and the with with the other woman. Oh, I forgot her name, but she had the purple, the cool purple hair. Yes. Um, saying how you were supposed to, and I was like, oh, I always watch the Comic Con video. Look at me, like I'm whispering. I always watch the Comic Con videos on YouTube after they post them. <laughs> because the podcast the network i podcast for we have been covering it for years so we've got a bunch of videos from past years that you would love like interviews with different mm -hmm. people anyway we don't have to talk but, but yeah I was, your people will get refunded or they'll let you come next year i don't know if that's the same no, i press. wasn't you don't charge you as press oh so cool. i just but i just can't go and i wanted to go i know what's that um, but so I was looking for a DSLR, DSLR to rent to take with me and the Nikons during the convention circuit, maybe it's me getting old and being out of shape. I'm working on getting back in shape, but getting old is not changing. I'm still getting old. <laughs> um, it was wearing on me. So I said, well, let me try the Canon. Girl, I did not like the Canon. And it had nothing to do with you. I'm a, part of it. I'm a Nikon whore. I own that. But <laughs> the are different too whenever i pick up a nikon i'm like what do i do with this i'm like how do i right like i'm used to being able to reach with my thumb and change my iso and white balance i'm used to turning this yeah. knob to change my shutter speed this knob to change my aperture All and different. i'm i'm reaching on the canon i'm like where's the freaking where's the freaking shutter control and the iso and i didn't like it it's all I, the time <laughs> and you moving this Friday, I packed it up on Saturday. Like, when does FedEx open so I can send this back to him? <laughs> it's from me. <laughs> what? It's from me. I'm a nice whore. I own it. <laughs> Listen, I understand. I've I got a so I shoot with a 5D Mark IV, which is I think the, the, the but I didn't start there. My first camera was a 60D, 
Um, and I used to work for SCAD College, College of Art and Design as a res life person. And so actually a photography student was the one who helped me kind of find my first camera. Mm -hmm. And so I started with a 60D and a kit lens, um, then later graduated to um, a 50 millimeter that was like $125, you know, from Best Buy. Yeah. After the conference I went to, I decided to get a 6D um, and I had that for a while. And then last year I shot a wedding um, it was a friend's wedding and I just was feeling whether it was user error or it was just the, the difficulty of only having nine focusing points. I felt like, and I back button focus, but I felt like I wasn't getting my focus the way I wanted to. And I was super scared that I was going to shoot my friend's wedding or just anybody's stuff and miss all of the important shots. And so I got a, um, I got a, the, the Mark IV and I'm, listen I'm sticking with that for forever because that that was a nice chunk of change <laughs> and that was because the mark three I'm like this thing feels like like if I hit somebody with it I'm going to jail for murder it's heavy is the mark did they ease up on the pounds with the mark four is it still nah, just as heavy? I think it's still heavy and then I shoot I have a 70 to 200 so it's so funny oh. whenever I'm teaching the classes I always put it put them together and I have the kids or the people like holding them like oh that's heavy I'm like now think about carrying that around for 10 hours yeah. <laughs> so I, I shoot with that I have a Sigma 35 art that I bought from a friend used and then I have a 51.4 um mm -hmm. and I think that's those are my my main three um but so here's the thing, just to talk to you about the Sony, because you asked me about mm -hmm. it. It's, yeah, yeah. I have a 51.8 I just bought with it. Um, I do want to eventually invest in a 24 to 72.8, but with this, the Sony, the thing, the drawback, the drawback is that I'm able to find more off-brand and brand lenses for uh, Nikon than I am for Sony. And the uh, lenses for the Sony mirrorless system are pretty freaking pricey. They're pretty freaking pricey. So have you tried using an adapter? What's the like, it's just not as sharp, not as quick. There's, it depends on the adapter you get, um, whether or not it also talks to the camera and causes autofocus because in there's in-body stabilization. The nice thing is that there's also in-lens stabilization. But what I found with the 51.8 is that sometimes if you're not careful, it's not, I'm used to Nikon strength with low light. And so far, I'm not seeing that with the Sony that I have. Mm -hmm. um, so I do miss that. And then I had to shut off the in camera stabilization, no, the in lens stabilization. So you can do that from the camera because otherwise they're fighting each other to hunt for a shot. Ah, gotcha. So, so there's, there's a learning curve, but I have enjoyed it. I enjoy it more with the flash. I enjoy the pictures I get with the flash and without more, I won't lie. I'm afraid that I might slip and go ahead and go back to a Nikon DSLR, but I'm starting to wonder, just based on this stuff, I'm like, y'all have got to stop making these cameras like only men use them. And I'm just going to say that because you mentioned the weight, you mentioned your wrist. One of the people I interviewed, she has a ganglion cyst in her wrist from shooting. Ooh. And it's like, you guys, not only men shoot these things, but I feel like they're designed for, quote unquote, beefy, strong men to carry. But they I'm sorry. In the year of our Beyonce 2020, although I don't even want to give, you know, put this year on her, um, you should be able to create a DSLR that does DSLR work that doesn't feel like a murder weapon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, it should not feel like a murder weapon. Oh, <laughs> I'd be able to defend myself with a camera. Is all I'm saying. I have it. That's funny. I wonder though if they're going to do that or if they're just going to keep the you know, yeah, they're, they're as the alternative. So what well, is what, question? You said something about a skill. Yeah. <laughs> what creative you. skill do you think with all of this you're going to try to like dig deeper into? Because a part of this, what I'm hearing is a lot of this is your journey to really stay true to yourself. And a lot of that is the education and the youth piece. But there's a creative piece in there too that I'm hearing. So yeah. what creative skill do you want to also dig into while you're doing all this? It's kind of funny. I always tell people when I was working in higher ed, I felt like a creative working in a super administrative capacity. Mm -hmm. Then I started doing this full time. I was like, nah, you're actually just like a, a, a nerd that <laughs> has some creative like 
creativity to it. Like I'm a, I'm a, yeah. I'm a blend of a lot of extremes. I feel so. I um, it's interesting. I feel like I lost what I was gonna say. Um, <laughs> what was I about to say? I was gonna say that. Oh man. Maybe it'll come back to me. Ask me a question again. <laughs> what creative skill do you want to walk away from this or delve into deeper next? So I really like lighting. Um, okay. Since I've been using off-camera flash for a while, I feel like it started to kind of set me apart. Um, and, and it's getting closer to the images that I see in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, there are a couple photographers whose work that I really like. And John Gress is one. It's, I want to... I want to, and it, a lot of these things are like one light setups. So or if you look at like, um, was it Vanity Fair and Diddy? Like, and they, they had those pictures in the room and they were like on the piano and they were doing all this other stuff. And a lot of times this is very, very simple lighting um, and very, very simple settings, but it gives you this kind of high-end editorial feel. And I would love, what where I want to go to in my mind is I want to be able to provide college, high school um, portraits this same kind of feel and tone and oh so God. yeah and so I'm hoping um that I can as I've grown in my lighting I see me moving more towards that that direction but what I see now and the opportunity I see for myself with this quarantine stuff and maybe I'm giving it away early um but I don't I'm not a big like oh competition I'm just like we'll both do it and we'll both get clients but I want to do some cool like timeless kind of graduation or like prom or like type things i want people to look back on their stuff especially now with this social media age people want to feel like celebrities and feel like all of these other stuff i want them to walk away and look like themselves but for the experience to look super high-end and crisp and so I, I, what's her name sue bryce her education stuff is free all this week Ooh, and so she has a video <laughs> we mark that to yeah. go back that? My friend took me yesterday. It's free until the 26th. All of her videos, and she has a video on there showing how to do your own canvas, like DIY, paint your own canvas. And so mm -hmm. I want to start using like canvas backgrounds and doing some different things like that. Um, so I just want to get better in my lighting. Um, mm -hmm. And then the other thing that's not really creative, but it's like something that I've had to work on is I just want to get over my imposter syndrome. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm so <laughs> I am doing a video on that because I just, I've been, I've been teaching myself to quilt. I'm afraid of trying different types of things. And a lot of it is imposter syndrome. I'm, I'm doing a video on that, but girl, yes. And I feel That's like black women get that so hard, which is sad because we're so educated. And we're so talented. And yet in a way that I don't, we, I, I don't think we realize we allow the world to still get in our heads and make us think we're not worthy. We're not valuable. We have nothing to contribute. And so what we're contributing isn't the real thing. And then yeah. people come behind us and say, oh, that's cute and all. Yeah. And for me, people are like, oh, you know, and that's not like, not a point of like arrogance, but people are like, oh, I really like your stuff. It's really great. And in my mind, I'm like, it ain't that great. I see this issue. I see that issue. Yes. I feel like this. And it's, it's kind of like, it's like I become my own, my own worst critic. And so that makes me feel like an imposter more like other people. I feel like I've had really, really supportive people and I've had to, thrust myself out of my own like perfectionism sometimes it's kind of like it's not gonna be perfect and like I had a mom cry oh. like people used to say oh you know I just want to make people feel like this and I want people to feel like this and they feel beautiful and I want you know and it wasn't that I didn't want people to feel that way but I just didn't have a super invested like um I just want women to feel empowered and stuff I just was kind of like I really like taking pictures because I'm a nerd and it's super technical. Like I realized, that's what I was going to say. I realized that I thought that I was a super creative person in an administrative world, but I'm actually a very like critical scientific brain with some, with some creative pieces to it. And so I love photography because it's super technical. Like mm -hmm. that's, what's really getting me going. Like I enjoy the process of learning how to take a technical photo and the mm -hmm. creative piece often or the posing and different things are the things that I often feel like I struggle with. And so when it comes time to talking about my work or people complimenting my work or giving me feedback on my work, I'm all, they're looking at it purely from like a creative or just from an emotional standpoint. And I'm 
checkpointing off all of the technical things that are incorrect in the picture. <laughs> and so oh. I had to like balance that. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Anything else you want to share before we sign off? Um, um, I'm like, da, 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 da. what's I feel like I should have something to say. <laughs> I feel like no, you it, you've said no, a lot. I feel like there's things that I want to say, but I'm like, what should I say? Um, yeah, nah, I guess not. I'm gonna regret that. Like later on, I'm gonna be like, you should have said XYZ, and I was just like, ah, oh, nah. Anything I didn't answer? I don't know. No, <laughs> oh, you answered everything. And I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. <laughs> no, I thank you for letting, thank you for having me on here. This is fun. Because <laughs> I enjoy talking about this stuff. I just be like, who wants to hear me though? <laughs> we going to so see, gonna... you're going to have at least 10 to 20 people on YouTube that want to see Hey, you. hey, y'all 10 to 20. We grateful for you. Thank you. 